Hello everyone, my name is The Clever Fool. Today I'll be playing the second episode of the custom campaign created by High Note. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly. This episode is titled A Distraught Path. Up the ranks was fantastic. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Let's go ahead and get started. My empire lies in ruin. As our famished generals retreated to Khorasan to recover their strength, the Arabs spread into the heart of Persia like wildfire. In the matter of just a few years, everything that I once knew was destroyed. In this dark hour, I stand alone. All of my former comrades have either lost their lives or converted and joined the Arabs. Even the Zoroastrian priests, always confident about Persia's future, are now convinced that the apocalypse is upon us. But I am not ready to lay down my sword and shield. Not when an eternity of prostitution lies before me. I swore at a young age that I would lead the Persian army to its greatest streak of victories. I cannot allow anything to convince me otherwise. I do not have many options. Without a home and without a leader, all I can do is take matters into my own hands. Only a few of us yet remain, but as long as we still breathe, we must fight for the survival of our empire. We have to start again from scratch. There is but one route where we might be able to make our escape. Concerned with matters at home, the Arab Caliph has forbidden his empire's expansion into the Indian subcontinent. If we can make it to the legendary Indus River Valley, where one of the first great civilizations forged its roots, then we might just have the chance to organize a resistance movement. I am doubtful that we can even survive the journey. The road east is cold, mountainous, and infertile. At this point, however, we have nothing left to lose. Brilliant voice acting. Lots of good emotion there. I do notice that the stories are a bit longer. What has become of my precious Persia? I have to escape before the Arabs return. I have noticed that the starting and ending sequence is longer. The narrator spends more time talking, but also speaks a bit faster than other narrators, so overall the time is pretty similar. Anyway, our main objectives are that Apernik needs to survive. We need to bring Apernik and at least eight military units to the Indus River Valley, which is marked by the purple flag. We need to gather soldiers to flee Persia until the Arabs arrive and prevent the Libyan scouts from tracking us to the main Arab army. Our secondary objectives are in, or not secondary objectives, our hints tell us that in the unforgiving winter, Apernik's army cannot last long without food. Look for possible food sources like huts, wild animals, and potential allies. That sounds so sinister, man. That sounds like you're going to eat your potential allies to keep your soldiers fed. If your food counter reaches zero, your units will gradually lose hit points until they perish. Oh, it's one of those missions. Apernik will not be able to gather everyone in time before the Arabs return to the Sassanid Empire's eastern front in Khorasan. Find as many warriors as possible, but do not wait too long to leave or else the Arabs will chase you on your way out. War elephants are slow, but they're a great meat shield against enemy ambushes. Protect your healers. You won't be able to attain new soldiers easily, so you must preserve the ones you find at the beginning. To save time before running out of food, it is a great idea to multitask your forces, particularly by scouting ahead with your most durable units while your healers replenish anyone close to following. There are multiple routes to the Indus Valley. Find whichever way suits your army best based on the scout section. Keep a close eye out for red huts and flags. If you see any, that means there's a Libyan scout nearby. Be prepared to strike quickly in such a case. Only buildings marked by flags will yield food if destroyed. 
Your scouts report that in their zealous rampage, the Arabs in green have just conquered and subjugated the rest of the Persian Empire in orange. In a last-ditch attempt to uh, preserve her people and culture, uh, Apernik in yellow is organizing a resistance to overthrow the Arab occupa occupation. I just realized I just inserted the word uh, attempt there on my own mentally. To do this, she must gather as many survivors as possible and flee to the lush Indus River Valley, where she will have the safety and resources to structure her movement. Although the surviving Persian soldiers are scattered, the types of units you'll find are largely organized by area. Pygon and halberdiers can be found on the western side of the river, just outside the bottom of the Stephen Castle. Crossbowmen are waiting on the eastern side of the river. Paladins and Savars are located in the north part of the base and are farthest from the castle and exit. War elephants and Zoroastrian priests are in the south, close to the exit. Although the main Arab army is initially busy consolidating their strangle over the conquered Persians, they have already dispatched several of their Libyan scouts in red to inter intercept anyone who flees to the east. If Apernet cannot stop them soon enough after being spotted, word will quickly spread to the main Arab force and they will immediately chase after her escape party. The northern route is the easiest to navigate, but it is occupied by the vicious western Turks in Sion. These nomadic horsemen are numerous and will show no mercy to trespassers, and will ardently chase Apernik should her army veer too close to their tents. If Apernik can pillage their buildings, however, she can stock up on enough food to easily last her the rest of the journey east. The western Turkic horde comprises, comprises of light cavalry, steppe lancers, hunting wolves, hunting wolves, wow, and cavalry archers. The middle route to the Indus River Valley takes Apernik through the Afghan mountains. Although this path is shorter and less dangerous than the land of the Western Turks, food is much scarcer here, meaning she will have far less time to heal injured units. Additionally, not every corridor has a way through. Watch for Arab patrols in blue, which are scattered across this region. The southern route will take Apernik through the Hindu kingdom of Sindh in gray. The clans there are not friendly towards the Persians. But because they are also threatened by the Rashidun Caliphate, Apernik may be able to win their favor by showing generosity towards them. Like the middle route, however, this area has several dead ends, so it is important to scout it in advance so as not to waste too much time. Additionally, not all Sindhis are willing to join Apernik, even if she brings word of peace. Hostile Sindhis are purple. All right, let's go ahead and get this started here. Precious Persia, I have to escape before the Arabs return. If you don't do something, Zoroastrianism as we know it will cease to exist. Women aren't allowed to fight in the Rashidan army. I will never sacrifice my type for those animals. I have no intention of becoming a lackey to an Arab governor. I'll be waiting for you. Right, I think it's a nice touch that these soldiers move towards the flags. I don't do well in support, but if I inhale any more smoke, I'll be dead before the Arabs can even find me. Now, in the northern quarter, we have mounted units, so those are the units that I really want to go for. I am not putting my life on the line for a god that I know nothing about. I am Zoroastrian for life. The Arabs have burned down our libraries, have replaced them with shrines to a false god. They have gone too far. These monsters will pay for what they did to my family. My two brothers were both killed fighting the Arabs. You're my only family now. The crossbowmen sound like assassins, man. They scare the crap out of me. Good voice acting still, but it might have to do with like the mic quality or something. Makes them real scary to me. Easy, boys. You'll be safe in no time. The Arabs tried to force us to accept Allah as the one true God. I told them yes, but deep inside, I could never betray the great Ahura Mazda. I claim Persia in the name of Allah. All right. So something we need to remember. Is that uh, Apernik is strong as hell. Her pierce armor is incredible. 
So she can take tons of hits and keep coming back for more. I'm gonna try going the northern route here. Oh dear, it doesn't look like we'll find much water up here. This better be worth it at Barnik. Any animals for us to hunt? Doesn't look like it. Let's hunt this camel down. Gotta remember that the animals provide food. That's really important. We've been spotted! Stop that scout before he can warn the others! That was a close call. How dare you come here? Prepare to die. Okay, let's grab whatever food stores we can. Focus on healing up here. And then have Apernik keep going forward here. The key here is to move quickly. Let's retreat these guys for healing. Alright, we got plenty of time here. Let's slow things down just a little bit. And heal up. Oh, 
This scholar guy is really strong. Let's continue using Apronic to scout around here and take out these camels. Camels provide us a lot of food, which is really good. All right, let's move these units over here. Try not to get leered too deeply in by these cavalry archers. Get to these sources of food, move our Flemish pikemen back. Keep as many of these buggers alive as we can. Keep as many of our crosswomen alive as we can. Two here. We still have a pretty solid inflow of food here. Let's take this hill. And these pikemen are actually quite strong, the Flemish militia units. Thanks for the food, camel. Your sacrifice will be remembered. Those are some more food huts. Lots of food huts, actually. But probably a good number of enemies in this direction as well. I think the scholar only heals. I don't think he does any damage. Let's not get baited too far in there. 
Gotcha! That was a close call. It does feel like it was a pretty close call, doesn't it? Let's regroup out here. I'm sure these cons will run away soon. I just lost a priest there. That really sucks. That's a major source of healing gone. Let's just heal up with our scholar for a little bit here. Have Apernik snipe out these camels, give us additional food. This whole time we're healing, which is really good. We still have 30 units remaining. And assuming we don't get blocked by another gate, it looks like we are on more or less the final stretch here. Ten food per camel is pretty solid. We have 96 food. And there's food tents to be had in this direction. Uh, these guys, why are they not attacking? Hello? Thank you. Jeez. You were foolish not to surrender. Nice, the elephants give us lots of tribute. Turning green. Hold on, everyone, we're almost there. Let's just make a mad dash for it. Dude, this scholar is coming in clutch. Let's get the elephant and continue moving towards the end here. I think we're good. Speed is definitely of the essence here. Once you start running out of food, you're in big trouble. Finally, we've made it. Our work is far from over, but now we will have the resources necessary to launch a counterattack. 
آماده می کنم آسم اوکی اوز فان این جرنی ها تکن سویر تول آن می For the first time in my life, I live without a roof above my head and haven't eaten in almost a week. In the harsh Afghan mountains, there was little water or grass for our horses, and the persistent danger of Arab scouts drained our ability to think clearly. Even though we've made it to the other side, we still cannot help but feel paranoid. In the heart of the nightfall, My sleepless warriors ask me how we can continue to live like this. Although we found some help from the local Sindhi clans, I can still tell they aren't comfortable with our presence. Like us, they have suffered devastation at the hands of the Rashidun Caliphate, and they are weary of strangers. I know that the Arabs will strike again soon. We now have the chance to pick ourselves up. But we still lack the numbers or resources to face the unstoppable caliphate. At this point, I can only pray for a miracle that Ahura Mazda has not abandoned us. All right. So uh, the key here is definitely to kill the animals. The reason why things went pretty smoothly for me here was because in my first recording I did pretty much the exact same thing, except I forgot to kill the animals, so I ran out of food and a lot of my units died at the very end. I think I made it with seven units instead of the required eight, so that was pretty brutal. Let's just take a peek at the rest of the map here. So it looks like this northwest passage is quote unquote the safe passage. Whereas this zone is totally inaccessible. I don't think you're meant to be able to destroy those castles. Um, I do see a lot of relics all over the map. I'm not sure how those work exactly. Um, perhaps by having monks pick them up and put them in monasteries, it makes, it makes the uh, local villages friendly to you. But it's not immediately obvious. I think the northern path, which is the sort of straightforward combat oriented path, is the path that I'm the most uh, comfortable with taking. But again, you don't need to go all the way north. It's a very pretty map too. In terms of the starting scout area, I think it's good to pick up this priest here. Um, so what I do is I bring uh, I bring our hero to the priest, then to the pikemen, then to these archers, then to these pikemen. I ignore the pikemen down here, uh, loop up in this direction, picking up the halberdiers on the way. I ignore these halberdier, come up, grab the paladin, grab the scholar, grab these two paladins, grab these three uh, horse units. There's a couple more up here that you can get if you're really fast. Um, but I opted to go for the safe route. Then I loop all the way down. As I'm looping down, I grab the crossbowman and I make it to the elephant pen on time and finally get the priest uh, back here. So you get two priests, uh, the scholar, I think five paladins, three of the special riders, five halberdiers, uh, seven... Flemish Militia, two Elephant Archers, so it's a pretty solid, and of course five War Elephants, so it's a pretty solid army all around. Nice, so that was a fun mission. Probably has replayability factors in it as well. But until then, my name's been The Clever Fool. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.